Today is Tuesday, May 2nd. Wait, 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 wait. Something's something's different. Something's not right. I don't know if we can do Something's wrong here. Oh, oh here we go. Ah, there we go. Perfect. Now we can do the news. So, the big story this week that I'm sure you've all heard is the NSA is going to stop spying on us. Not really. Yeah, stop. Stop spying on us, but not really. They're not really going to stop. What they're going to stop doing is they're going to stop reading your emails if they contain the name or email address of someone they suspect of terrorism but are not directly to that person overseas. Terms and conditions may apply. <laughs> so it's a tiny little... There was this one part of their spying that somebody said, wait a minute, you're actually, even with the all these new laws, you're not allowed to do this exact thing. And they were like, oh, okay, we won't anymore. Uh, yeah, they didn't even get punished for it, which is what I thought was strange. Like, judges reviewed yeah. it and were like, well, you probably shouldn't do that anymore. And they're like, okay. Yeah. No no legal action required or taken there. They are, uh, they're never going to get punished for anything. That's, uh, that's the way it works, sadly. That's something we have to get used to. Right. So they won't be punished. And they'll probably continue to spy on us and lie to us. Like but normal. WikiLeaks continues to give us the truth. And this week, uh, it's not anything that affects us directly, unless you are, of course, someone who's working for the CIA or the NSA. This week, it's Scribbles. What a horrible name. Like, for a spy program, I mean, like, just calling it Scribbles does sound kind of benign. It's not too terribly bad. Like, it could be a worse name. Good, great name for a pet. Yeah. I would name my pet Scribbles. I probably wouldn't, but I can understand if people did. So Scribbles, what it is, is it's a web beacon that is embedded into your Microsoft Office files. And it's meant to catch people who are trying to copy things off of the internal servers and leak them out because the web beacon will then identify you when you try to use these files. Now, LibreOffice and a bunch of other open source programs, I think it'll actually identify Scribbles, though. Right. Uh, Scribbles cannot do anything with those. And that's how it's gotten on WikiLeaks now, so we all know about it. Uh, even worse, it will actually identify that the web beacon is in there. Yeah. So if you're going to steal from the CIA, you better not be using Microsoft Office. So you've probably heard about the FCC this week. Uh, of course, we've talked about the FCC pretty much every news episode that we've ever done, and we're not big fans. So I'm not going to reiterate all the net neutrality stuff. You probably know that by now, and if you don't, Go read about it. It's worth your while to actually go read about it. But we will mention that this week they have opened up the net neutrality argument to public comment. So if you know if you actually want to get on the phone with somebody, I know I don't like to do that. Did do you like no, I, no, I'm too socially stupid to, no. to be on the phone. But I would, I would fill out a web form, and that's what you can do now. Yeah, the, you can fill out this web form on the FCC website. This link will be in our video description. And you can go and give them your opinion. And they will print that out and put it right in the shredder. Yeah, but you guys are YouTube commenters, and we know you guys are up to the task <laughs> of giving people your opinion. So don't fail us. Now, maybe if we're lucky, somebody in power might get some of these and read them. Probably won't. Yeah, it seems like they're probably just going to... yeah. Throw it in the shredder. But. <laughs> but this week we've also learned a fun thing about the Senate staffers and their identification cards. So in government, it's actually pretty common to have two-factor authentication. Now you probably use two-factor with your phone. In the government, it's more common to use a, an ID card. So you have to have a physical card and a password to get into all these, uh, you know, classified documents and stuff like that. Or even just get into buildings or anything like that. Yeah. But it turns out the Senate staff's ID cards, um, they don't have a chip. They can't actually be two-factor. They have a photo. They have, yeah. They have. It's not just a photo. It's like a photo of a chip, so it looks official, but it's not actually doing anything. <laughs> but it gives you that like feeling of being more official. So they, you know, a lot of people have been. They've reached out for comments on this, and there hasn't been a good excuse as to why that is. I mean, clearly. If you go to the trouble of putting a photo, you're trying to trick somebody. But who? Uh, is it the card makers trying to trick the staffers? Or is it the staffers trying to trick the public? No, uh, I wonder if it was someone, like a contractor got hired and the contractor actually didn't know how to do that. 
That and would... so they just like told the designer, like, just put, <laughs> just put a picture on there. They won't know the difference. And the government was stupid enough to hire that contractor and then was also too stupid to realize they were getting taken for a ride there. That seems uh, likely. Having worked with people with money and power on security issues, here's how I think it went. I think they probably tried it or were going to try it. And they told them, hey, you're going to have, along with your the password that's your pet's name and your daughter's birthday, you're going to have to have this card and you have to remember it and keep it with you at all times to do oh, your yeah. job. And somebody said, no. That ain't, that's too hard for me. We're not doing that. And they're like, but we have to put it on there because if people see your cards and it's not on there, they're going to raise questions. And they're going to, and they said, no, we're just, not doing that. Just do something that looks official. <laughs> It'll be fine. So maybe they'll have to now that it's out in the public. We'll see. Or, or they'll just completely ignore it and continue to jeopardize secrecy <laughs> and security. Yes, because authority does not like to be questioned, especially corrupt authority. And that's where this story we what come. What a good segue. And uh, this has to do with a man in Illinois who was angry because his wife got a red light camera ticket. This story made me furious for like, like I'm not on anybody's side here. One, one group's being super pedantic and the other group's being super pedantic and they're both trying to punish each other for something that doesn't really matter. <laughs> well, I, I can pick a side. Now, if you read the, the letter, the email that the guy wrote, I think it was a letter. It is, uh, here's a guy who is clearly, I think he's from another country or at least, Sweden, you know. I think is where he's from. And not very many ger generations off the boat, if not that. And it's, you know, that old joke that's in every movie. It's like. I was an engineer and now I'm driving a cab, oh, you know, yeah. kind of. So he's got that attitude, but he's right about one thing. These red light cameras, uh, something that municipalities have been caught doing is reducing the yellow light time because it people don't notice and it really makes the revenue that comes in from the red light cameras a lot higher. Now, they've also proven in a lot of studies that the red light cameras don't really improve safety, just generates revenue, and they actually can be a cause of more rear end collisions because people will lock them up yeah. to try and avoid the. So this guy was complaining and he actually grafted out. <laughs> he did like research and like he filmed made... it and like did like a study and like actually did like, there it is. There's the graph where he talks about the yellow light. So he actually grafted, he actually like timed them and grafted out and did a, did engineering work. Yeah. Here. And their response to that was to say that, you're practicing engineering without a license in the state of Illinois, and they find him $500. I mean, it's it's a dick move, but I mean, <laughs> you literally spent your free time that you could be spending with your wife, your children, doing community service, you know, tends, tending time on a hobby to do this. Like, So uh, he, of course, sued them, and it was ruled that he wasn't being paid. He was This was hobby engineering. You don't need a license yeah. for hobby engineering. But it is... Uh, sort of a, a terrifying and chilling thing that yeah. just by complaining, you get fined $500. It's not, I guess, don't be an asshole, but, or learn to be an asshole tactfully. I don't know. What's the, what's the rule there? So today when you were getting ready to do the news, your big news debut, how many different people did you text a picture of your outfit to, to get opinions on it? Zero, because I woke up late. <laughs> And I was like, I need to get ready so I can go to church because my boyfriend's going to be here in like five minutes. Well, in case you also don't have a supportive network of friends to send to text your outfits to, Amazon wants to take care of you. This is, I have so many questions about how this works. The article didn't really go into it. So you put this Amazon thing in your, in your room and it'll like take a picture of your outfit and tell you whether or not you look good. I have like... How is it judging? And can it judge men's fashion? Can it judge women's fashion? Like, do you tell it when you stand in front of it? Like, I'm going to work. I'm going to a formal event. Because, I mean, the big part of that is knowing the nuance of, like, is this black tie? Is this formal? Is this, you know, every day where you wear a plaid shirt? I mean. Works who, for every occasion. Don't knock it. Who can say? So it's going to use machine learning. Now, Amazon hasn't given all the details about how this will work, but it will have an AI component. It will also store your photos on the Amazon cloud every time, unless you go in and delete them, which is interesting. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's basically 
you're going to put this wherever you dress. So you're going to put it either in a bedroom or a bathroom for most people, right? Unless you have like a dressing room, if you're one of those people. Yeah. I know yeah. a few people who have that, which Maybe is Maybe like a, a walk-in closet, but yeah. that's going to be in your bedroom in most cases. So the uh, terrifying part of that is this is going to have a microphone in it. Even if the camera is facing like just one corner and that's your dressing corner, the microphone's going to be listening to you poop and have sex and any other weird stuff that you do in your bedroom and Singing. or bathroom. Yeah, I sing a lot, like in the bathroom. Like, does uh, that, they would hear that. I, what does it need the mic for? Have they mentioned? Is it just? Well, it's an echo. And that, oh, yeah, so I guess so you can talk to it and yeah, yeah, tell you, me, well, you, how do I look? Well, like, you, you don't want to have to click it. So it's like, heaven hey, forbid. echo, take a, uh, or Alexa. You, yeah. say, you say, when you say Alexa, there, Alexa's will kick on. So you can give it instructions if you uh, want. Uh, here, take a picture. How do I look? How do I you know, look? That type, that type of thing. So it has to be listening. And as we've seen before in the Amazon murder case, that it records everything, basically. Yeah. So it's recording everything that's going on in these places. Well, I wonder, too, I bet this will like eventually like open up a whole marketing avenue because it's like, well, I think you look like garbage today, Susan. But look at all these cool outfits I have on Amazon.com. The, uh, the one woman brought up, it's going to know if you're pregnant. Oh, yeah, it will know if you're pregnant. And also, it'll know if you're getting fat. Oh, yeah. You look a little rotund today, Susan. <laughs> Maybe you should lose a few pounds, Susan. Yes. Well, uh, it, won't be, it won't be that obvious. It'll just mark it. It's like, hey. I'll just make a quiet note in your file. Like, Maybe you want some uh, yoga mats, you know. Oh, yeah, it'll, yeah. In your recommended Amazon list. Right, yeah. That makes sense. Well, Internet of Things, like Alexa and all of these things, a lot of people don't like them. A lot of people really really don't like them and one person that really doesn't like them goes by the moniker of janitor and he's the creator of the bricker bot i like that name it's, it has a nice alliteration bricker bot. <laughs> bricker bot now we've seen the bricker bot before but it's back recently uh, this week it did another sweep and it's 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 grown it's become more powerful it's got better scripts and it's better able to identify the devices that are unsecured now the way the bricker bot works is it's kind of a, a vigilante. It's the Batman of, of bots. It doesn't uh, just destroy Internet of Things devices. It, it does eventually. But first it tries to secure them. It tries to save them and <laughs> make them good again. But failing that, if it can't secure them, it overwrites the firmware with just garbage, which in most cases makes it impossible to recover. It just destroys whatever the device is, has to be replaced. So the Bricker bot, it's out there. If you've got IP cameras or IoT devices that are contributing to the botnets, beware. It's coming for you. Your stuff's going to look like this, like in the picture, where it's just on fire, like a dumpster fire. <laughs> I don't know if he's ever set one on fire yet. but BrickerBot hasn't just done its own thing. It's also taking down ISPs in California. Yes, the California ISP, uh, I can't, Sierra Tell. They Never were running some uh, old Zizel modems. Uh, these were very old, hadn't been updated in a long time. And uh, BrickerBot, as we said before, it tries to hunt down unsecured devices. Now, these modems originally wouldn't have triggered BrickerBot. But the problem is another malware came in and Did infected it itself. Yeah. And as a lot of malware does, it unsecures the device as a part of installing itself because, you know, it wants to reinstall if anything happens. So as the unidentified other malware came in and destroyed the security on these modems, BrickerBot then would discover them, be unable to fix them, and destroy them. So There's multiple layers of destruction <laughs> happening just as one this, after the other. This little destructive ballet went through the ISP Tons of customers were knocked offline. Their modems didn't work. The ISP quickly ran out of replacement modems, and it took two weeks Before they to could get. manually fix every modem that the people brought in. Do you think they just told people, like, go out and buy your own modem? No, 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 no. 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 I guess they want people to rent them. But... Yeah, lease. They want the lease money. So uh, they just told them to wait. Oh, that's so stupid. Yeah, can you just imagine buy it. Yeah. being out? Of, For two like, weeks? Two weeks of doing internet. How would I keep up my Overwatch rank? <laughs> That's what matters. It's devastating. Another security news this week, Bitcoin hardware miner maker, Bitminer, was exposed as having a backdoor. What a tongue twister. <laughs> uh, 
That was a poor choice of words. I'm going to leave it in. Uh, they have a backdoor and a lot of their more popular Bitcoin miners. Now, all almost all Bitcoin mining these days takes place on these uh, standalone hardware units. Graphical GPUs cannot keep up with that anymore. And these had an interesting feature. They would call home every 11 minutes. And if that call home returned true, they would turn themselves off. And what's, you couldn't turn them back on. What's crazy about this is that they've known about it since what, like June 2016? Yes. So well, it's, it's been a thing for a while, and they're just now like, oh, I guess we should do something about that. Well, their defense is uh, the firmware itself is open source, so you could have gone in there and found it if you really wanted. But they claim this was a feature for people who had their units stolen. So I guess it's not uncommon for people to steal these, because you can generate uh, quite a bit of money anonymously. It's Bitcoin. So... They say that it was all a security measure, but it doesn't change the fact that you bought a device that was asking the manufacturer whether or not it should destroy itself every 11 minutes. Would, uh, would so who would know to steal that? Like, that's oh. what I want to know. Well, I'm sure that uh, Bitcoin mining is probably pretty big in organized crime. I mean, it's organized crime. fairly anonymous way to make money i guess i'm thinking like eastern kentucky like meth heads like if they saw that they'd probably be like oh leave that there <laughs> take the copper out of the wall it's like <laughs> i bet there's like a, a meth contingent somewhere that knows all about knows bitcoin. all about bitcoin mining. <laughs> take that box we need it that it's uh it's pretty common to uh use electricity usage to determine oh, okay, people are if growing. they're mining well to find people that's growing weed. Oh, yeah. I imagine too. if you had access to that data somehow, you could easily find Bitcoin mining operations and rob them. Oh, well, this is like a good plot for a movie. And I believe those units start at like a grand. So, so like, it's just a little thing and you could steal. What if you're like a meth head down on your luck and you're working at the electric company and you have access to all their records and then you have to start like stealing from all these different people who use too much electricity. <laughs> someone write that movie. It's going to be garbage and it's going to do really poorly, but it's, someone write it. It's like, uh, that's kind of like a really, really white trash version of Superman 2. <laughs> really, really, really white trash. <laughs> well, the Uber lawsuit, we've talked about this in the past. Uh, the rogue Google employee left, founded his own company called Auto, and was subsequently purchased by Uber. Well, that court case has hit another milestone. They've decided that he cannot declare the Fifth Amendment. He must reveal what was brought up. What he, what he took from everybody. I said I didn't know a whole lot about this story. I actually had to do some research on it because I was like, I don't know. Uh, but yeah, it seems he has to give up everything. Yeah. And, you know, trade secrets, whatever. So we're going to find out once they give this stuff up what if anything, he actually stole from Google. And it'll probably end up being that Uber has to stop using certain things. Uh, Uber's in trouble a lot, it seems like, these days. Uber is a, a company that seems to yeah. uh, really... Attract. Yeah, it's, it's magnetic for lawsuits. And, of course, you know, the guy did the video. He's, he was a bit of an asshole, it seems. So, so uh, we'll see. Uh, they, they seem to look kind of like the strong arm. They also had the lift thing. Lyft has sued because of, we talked about this before, the, uh, what they call it, the Hell app. Oh, yeah. So they were trying to trick the Lyft things and give them bad pickups and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. So maybe not the, uh, you know, the, the most uh, conscious company when it comes to ethics. Yeah, it seems like, I feel like I read something about them every other week or see a headline. Maybe, maybe don't become an Uber driver as a backup career to YouTube D-lister. Now, Z -lister. we talked about the uh, Alexa in your home, and there was the Alexa murder case where someone was killed in a living room, and the local police uh, got a warrant for the Alexa recordings because they thought the murder had been recorded. Uh, yeah. Well, here's something in that vein. It's the Fitbit murder case. Every every white woman I know has a Fitbit right now. They have like a whole giant kiosk at Target, like well, just full of Fitbits. And this could save your life. Well, not save your life. <laughs> it's save not going to save your life. Yeah, uh, it will help people find your killer though. It's a punitive measure. Yeah. But hey, as you're bleeding out, you'll feel better. Right? You'll feel better. Yeah, you'll yeah. know that they're going to catch the killer. So in this case, a man murdered his wife allegedly, and tied himself up 
called the cops and said that uh, an unidentified obese man in a mask did this murder and that he tied him up but let him live and ran off. And so uh, it turns out this woman had her Fitbit posting to social media, which is another big uh, thing. Yeah. Like, Ooh, look how much I exercise today. It's disgusting. Uh, so what the PD found out without actually even having to... Uh, Do that much digging. Well, they didn't have to have a warrant or anything. They found out that she ha was alive an hour past the time when he said she had died. So the Fitbit pretty much Nailed sunk that coffin. his defense... And now he is, uh, he's been arrested out on bail. I think Friday was when he had to go in for the trial. I don't know how that turned out, but uh, yeah, we'll see. not looking good for him, I would say. Yeah, I wouldn't. If I was on that jury, I wouldn't let him out. Yeah. That's a pretty easy thing for somebody to understand. Even if they don't understand technology, it's like, he said she died here. Here. Her Fitbit says she was still yeah, alive. Her, bar, her heart was beating, according to Facebook, up until. Well, we may need to get a panel of scientists point. to determine whether or not your heart beating actually means you're alive. <laughs> was it like abortion? <laughs> you have to know. <laughs> uh, speaking of Uber, Uber's getting serious about building real, honest God, flying taxis. Flying taxis. We've been promised flying cars in so many sci-fi movies, starting as early as the 80s. And oh, earlier than that. It was supposed to be now. We were supposed to be living the in the world future of flying is now. cars. Now, here's the, ter here's the part that breaks my heart. The, whole, the flying car thing was... How much fun is it going to be to drive a flying car, right? But by the time they get here, they're going to fly themselves. Gonna, yeah, so you're not going to be able yeah. to do it. My uh, One of my professors actually was, like, obsessed with flying cars, and he developed, like, a whole traffic system to figure out, like, how you would uh. deal with all the different dimensions and stuff, and he's never going to get to implement it now. <laughs> so, of course, you know, a lot of companies have talked about flying vehicles. Uber's not the first. But they've taken it a step further by actually, like, partnering with, aircraft companies they're like no we're serious about this we want this to happen by 2020 at the latest uh they've partnered with bell helicopters which is a, a well-known helicopter company and the way they envision this working is rooftop to rooftop flying so it would be urban areas i assume right yeah so you're gonna make your own way to the top of the building hop in the taxi and it's gonna fly you to another building and of course you know it'll be by the app I imagine in the beginning it'll be sort of like a bus where you, you know, lots of people just pack right. into the sky you're, bus. You're not going to do like one or two passengers because that wouldn't make much sense. No, economically. economically, that would be suicide. But then you got to think about the weight limit. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what they come up with. But hey, I would take taxis. A, I would. Take I don't a, know if I, I don't know if I'd do first generation. What like I think it would be fine. Like safe wise, I, I wouldn't want to be crammed in with like twenty other people. But what well, makes you so confident it's going to be fine safe wise? Because. I've flown on a plane and, and stuff before. It's fine. <laughs> it's much different than a plane. No. <laughs> Can't be that much different. Well, self-driving, of course, it's the way of the future. A lot of people don't like it, but it's it's coming. It's going to yeah. happen, and you're going to have to deal with it. And Google, or Alphabet, as they are now known, is ready to take the next step. First real... Oh, yeah, they're putting real people in the cars now. I remember the story. <laughs> let's, do, let's do that again. Yeah. I was like, what happened in this story? Oh, yeah. Actually, you want to introduce this one? Yeah. Uh, on the same sort of note, uh, we have another self-driving car story. They're putting actual people in self-driving cars now. It's not just, you know, crash test dummies and cameras. That's Google, or Alphabet, as they're now known. And their self-driving cars have been on the road for a long time. And they've done a pretty good job. But the only people behind the wheel have been the people working on them, or Google employees. And now, for the first time in Phoenix, you can sign up. It doesn't cost you anything. Of course not. Uh, just, I'm sure you have to sign all sorts of waivers. Like, Oh, yeah, yeah. It might cost you a leg, but initially, no upfront cost. And uh, they will give you an app so that you can summon a car and ride it around ride for it free. Around. I know it's notable that they do this in Phoenix where it's, like, fairly level and there's not a lot of rain. You know, there's nothing, right. yeah. nothing to, like, really impede. You can't put, like, a self-driving car like that here in eastern Kentucky. It's going to work. Just long stretches of road. Now, I wonder if they're self-driving. It's going to be in Phoenix, and it's starting now, so it's going to be the summertime. Yeah. Do you get to control the air conditioner? <laughs> you keep, it's so hot, I'm dying. <laughs> you're, like, trying to turn up the air, and you can't. And then, like, you're trying to roll down the windows, and you can't. And you end up, first person dies in Phoenix, self-driving oh, car. How hilarious would that be? Because it would be like leaving a dog in the car. <laughs> the like, person's just clawing. Like, at like they can't get the door open. The door locks itself. <laughs> Let me or, like, out. Maybe there's a little fender bender. 
and you know the electrical system goes out but it locks you in for safety for safety yeah oh man another great movie idea from level one text that would be great because it's like you know one of those movies where it's in real time yeah yeah and you're trapped in the car with those people mm. i would watch that oh, I, would, I, I would watch it after it came out on dvd netflix netflix yeah <laughs> <laughs> netflix original movie we haven't gotten much hardware news this week. It's been kind of a dry week for hardware, but we did get a new announcement that Intel, actually this was a leak. I don't think this was an announcement. Intel is going to be changing the naming convention for its Xeon processors. This is a, a great heartbreak to me because I'm still learning all of the hardware. And uh, as someone who's working on a tech channel, it's a constant pain for me to try and remember all of the hardware names. And now they're changing it again, and now I'm going to have to remember a whole new set of stuff. <laughs> well, they are simplifying it. That's, so, that's good. So, whereas before you had numbers and letters yeah, that and was... seemed arbitrary, now you're going to, it's going to be gold and platinum. platinum. Wow, where have we seen that before? <laughs> I think that's actually a lot of competitive games do that. Yeah, Blizzard, yeah. especially. So, but the problem is, uh, those letters and numbers were not arbitrary. In a lot of cases, they identified how many sockets you could use with use these with things the and uh, their relative speed, where they belonged. And this gold and platinum stuff doesn't really communicate that. I mean, it, I guess it gives you an idea of like platinum is always better than gold, but it seems to be gimmicky. Yeah. Uh, I don't know how I feel about it. Uh, it I think it, a lot of this has to do with Ryzen. So the... 357 naming convention. AM that is very simple. <laughs> I did like just, that. AMD just took it. They're like, yep, we're using it too now. What are you going to do about it? And I guess this is what they're going to do about it. Try to simplify it. I mean, I, I'm not, I don't know. If it's if it's ultimately easier, I, I can't complain too much, though I, I can see why you might want to have something a little more information dense when you're talking about hardware. Oh, I think the comments are going to explain they're, to you. Why, why I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Please write me a long, detailed comment about why I'm wrong. I need to learn somehow. Uh, maybe it, it'll push more people into the arms of uh, Ryzen when Naples comes oh, out. Oh, AMD. Uh, how, how dare you? How dare you make it more normy? Well, so uh, the not really hardware news, but Windows. Software, yeah. We like to uh, crap on Windows. A lot of people like to joke that Windows is malware. Windows is a virus. And uh, turns out the WebRoot antivirus agrees with them. Deletes Windows files. System 32, you don't need it. Just delete it. <laughs> so, yeah, the WebRoot uh, antivirus, it decided this week that one of the uh, folders in Windows that is routinely infected by malware was always infected by malware. Just no matter delete what, it. Get just rid get of it. rid of it. And it quarantined a lot of those files, which caused the operating system to not behave correctly. Uh, this was, if you're an individual user, maybe not. A huge problem, but a lot of enterprise users Ooh, yeah. sort of like, hey, I've got 1,300 systems to deal with this on now. Thanks a lot. Oh, so, yeah. I wonder, man. A bad a bad week for WebRoot and anybody using their, Anyone their products. IT. The other big hardware release this week was Intel's Optane. And, uh, of course, we talked about this in the past. We won't go too much into it. Optane is uh, kind of like a little turbocharger for your existing hard drives. It offers caching and increased performance especially for old spinning hard drives and not ssd drives and uh it was released this week came out it's given a price point we don't know too much about it but rumor has it that wendell is returning from his journey with a couple of samples so we'll have more to tell you about it but if you want one if you can't wait you can go get one right now uh, this is a pretty exciting story. So we can now 3D print buildings. Uh, what's cool about this is it's actually a freestanding machine, whereas a traditional 3D printer, you would actually have to kind of have like a box and a base and stuff for it. This thing just prints all the way around. And what's cool about this, too, is they, they did a sample, and it's a dome. It goes all the way around, up and down. And it's hollow, so they can fill it with concrete, they can fill it with dirt, they can fill it with whatever. And it's structurally sound. This is a new approach to 3D printing that's not limited by uh, being inside of a container that is printed with, uh, you know, sort of an infrastructure. It's a freestanding thing. And uh, more interesting than that, it has different nozzles they can use. So it can print 
all sorts of different materials. It can even do detail work with uh, cutting blades and lathes and things of that nature rather than just printing. So you have this cool new robot that is able to do a whole lot of things and it can do them for the most part autonomously. Uh, I think this version, it, you can't just set it and forget it, but they're talking about future versions where you put this thing down, maybe put a solar panel up so that it has power so you, and you just leave it and you come back later and there's a building there. And it's even got a scoop that can collect materials at the work site. This is a really cool new step in building autonomously. It reminded me a lot of, uh, I don't know if you guys have heard of these earth ships where it's like the completely like everything is organic and special and like you usually build it into a hillside kind of looks like a dome. I bet this will like revolutionize building a, an earth ship now. Those kind of special homes like that. They've talked about uh, using these to like disaster relief. Yeah, yeah. So you drop some of these things in and you know a few days later you've got buildings, you've got shelters and you can you know, store things, you can move people in. Ikea did something like that recently as well, but this seems like this could be even better if you could, instead of having to bring in so many shipping containers or however of the Ikea stuff, you could literally just build it on site would and you, have it permanent. Would you live in a house that was like little bubbles connected by? Yeah. Oh yeah. That's you know? like a hobbit hole. That's like my dream. <laughs> I would totally do that. How, how could I not have predicted that? <laughs> no, no. I've, I've looked into earth ships before and the same sort of building thing, some sort of concept. Uh, they're very expensive, but they're really, really cool. Well, 10 years from now. Maybe it's a thing. Maybe by the time I can afford yeah, a house. Maybe the robot would be cheaper than the houses. I, I don't think the materials would cost you a ton of money here either because it's yeah. mostly concrete and insulation. Oh, see, it's, they don't have anything for plumbing either. I think there's, there's going to be a lot of regulations that come with that eventually. And that's not the only robot this week. Although these next robots don't let the headline fool you. They don't exist yet, but they're working on it. They're them. working on it. See, a big problem in the uh, fruit world is picking delicate fruits. Yeah. So you go to the supermarket, you're faced with that giant wall of apples. And you don't know what any of them are. Do you Do you really know what any of those yeah, apples yeah. are? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I get Red Delicious. That's my favorite. Well, I know Red Delicious, but there's like 50 other kinds. Honey Crisp, also very good. You've tried all the apples. I've tried all of them. Not all of them. You're but saying I if I went and got and put a blindfold on you and put the apples out, you could, you could identify by taste? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Video, Patreon. That's the next video. Patron only. Up. It's Patreon exclusive. <laughs> the so, stuff you signed up for. So the problem with that business model is that the ugly apples will never get picked. If they get, yeah, if they get bruised, um, right. they actually have a robot that already does things like pick cherries where they just shake the tree and it falls down into a tent. thing with cherries is if they bruise, it doesn't really matter. With an apple, it does. Yes. So ugly apples, nobody will ever buy them. They, that's applesauce. But you lose a lot of the value of the apple by doing that. So there's two companies that are looking to revolutionize the apple picking world. Now, <clears throat> this kind of gets political a little bit because a lot of these jobs are illegal immigrants. And that's kind of a hot button issue right now. So one of the tactics that ICE does is <laughs> they go to the orchard. And in the middle of the day, they round them up. And ship them out. So fewer and fewer illegal workers are getting into this because of the risk and just because it's not a fun job. Yeah, I mean, if you're coming here for a better life, do you really just want to pick apples all day? Well, I think actually a lot of them do. But yeah. Uh, so enter the robots. Now we got two kinds of robots that are going to be into the apple picking world. The first kind of robot is a three finger robot that gently, very gently plucks the apple and actually twists it off you don't want to damage it by Oh, pulling. do you have to do the, the thing where you yeah, do, the, they do like the, the ABC? The, the model wave? No, no, no. I was thinking the ABC. You don't remember the ABC game? When you did the, you would twist the stem off the apple and then whatever, you would say a letter every twist. And whatever oh, okay. the last, whatever you landed on when the thing came off, whatever letter that was, that was the name of your future spouse. That's what their name started with. <laughs> okay. That's some folklore for you. I don't think the robot will do that. Any but. of you who are unmarried who are we want to find out the name of your future spouse. Hey, there you go. There, well, not the name, just the first letter, because you don't want to give away all the secret. The alternative is uh, the the other robot is looking for a vacuum method of just g gently vacuuming the apple and plucking it from the tree. See, I think I would want the vacuum because I think that would look cooler. Yeah, would... but I wonder, I wonder which would be more energy efficient. I guess we'll find out. Yeah. Because just like the flying cars, they've promised these by 2020. 
Oh, Robot please. fruit apple pickers by 2020. I'm ready. Prepare yourself. Prepare yourself. Oh, this is an exciting one. Uh, this is actually one of my favorite stories we read about this week. They have developed an artificial womb, and they work so far. They've been testing them with lambs, and the lambs have grown up and been totally fine so far. Um, this is a really, really exciting story because that means preemie babies can actually maybe make it for a lot longer instead of having to stay in an incubator where it's kind of like a very low chance of survival. Look how cute that little boiling bag lamb is. <laughs> it look, kind of looks like an MRE, like <laughs> boiling bag meal. No, this is not. Um, if you're imagining Matrix here, that's not what's going on. Mm -hmm. Turns out you got to start the baby in an actual human. In the actual, the you real gotta, thing. you got to have a starter. Starter then, oven. Then you pluck that thing out, put it right in the bag, finish it. You know, it's like, uh, it's like a uh, sous vide, but in reverse. But in reverse, you put, you put you the baby in You start it in the oven. And you finish it in, it in the, the bag. bag. This is actually really exciting. I did a little research on this because I love medical technology. Um, and there was an article from like 2005 where some Chinese researchers were trying to do this same thing with the uh, goats. And they kept running into an issue where they couldn't get the ambiotic fluid to be like the exact right makeup. Um, and it looks like they may have possibly solved this in this case. And, and it could be very exciting. This could be a great medical breakthrough for babies. So as you mentioned, uh, the reason here is premature birth. Premature birth, uh, we're good at keeping those babies alive, but they're a little screwed up later in life most of the time. Yeah, you know, they it's not be good a little smaller. Your, yeah. your organs, uh, there's a lot of problems. So this bag seeks to uh, fix that. You know, if you if there's a premature birth, you just pop it in the bag, finish it out. <laughs> Put it in the microwave, just eat, eat it up, <laughs> let it go a little bit longer. Or, hey, maybe it's like, you know, you're going to have the baby, but it's like, look, we got these cruise tickets. We, they're not refundable. We got to We got to figure this just out. Just bag that thing for two weeks. We'll be back. We'll take it right out. Everything's fine, right? I, mean, I guess. I don't, I don't, oh, there's so many questions I have. I'll, I'll be interested to see how it progresses. This was done, I think, in Philadelphia at the Children's Hospital. We'll see how it keeps going. And then next story, unroll.me heartbroken after being caught selling user data to uber it's always uber <laughs> it's always uber it's never anybody else uber uh they don't care they want your money and they don't care how they get it now unroll.me is a site that will automatically unsubscribe you from things which is interesting because it's like hey you don't need this annoyance. Let us save you from it. Let me give you another annoyance instead. Yeah, but yeah. they were selling the data of everybody who was using the service. Now, the the funny, head, this is not uncommon. I would yeah. say a lot of free services do this. But what's funny free. is that they are heartbroken. Yeah. Heartbroken. They're heartbroken that people found out how they made money <laughs> yeah. was exactly how the president put it. They have not said that they're going to change this behavior. Uh, it was in the they're terms of service all along. They have said that oh, we're kind of sorry that we didn't make it more obvious and we hit it in legal language, but we're kind of sorry, sorry, not sorry, but we're heartbroken that you're mad about it. So rip in peace. If you're an unroll.eme user, uh, they're selling your data. Just be aware of that. And a lot of those services are doing that. So the windows 10 creator update, we talked about it last week. Everybody was excited about it. Not really. Yeah. But uh, it turns out on older hardware, it's not the best idea. Oh, this, the, the picture here of the woman just like putting her hands out. That's such a good stock photo to I'm, express I'm how I feel to, about the Windows Creator update. I'm curious like what you search on stock photo. It's it like, doesn't no, matter. You stop. find weird photos like this all the time. Probably stop. Mm. Do uh, you think they spelled it S-T-A-H-P? Yeah, stop. stop. <laughs> Oh, I have so, to look up stock photos all the time, and that stuff comes up constantly. So uh, even Microsoft is now recommending if you don't have newer hardware, don't do the creator's update because they found all sorts of problems with it on older hardware. And they're saying don't ever do the manual install. Wait till it's rolled out to you because, of course, we're spying on your hardware, and we'll let you know when it's ready for your specific machine. So if you've already done it, wah, uh, wah. let us know if you've had any problems with it. Some people have reported they have older hardware and it was fine. But other people, it's caused a lot of terrible problems. Next story, we have economic giants who are not into social media. And economic giants, in this case, mean people like Germany and Japan and other places like that. I'm not super surprised by this story. Uh, I have a few friends in, in Germany, and 
They've all told me the only reason they use sites like Facebook or Twitter is to keep in touch with their American friends. Yeah, so it turns out that uh, Germany is the biggest outlier because Germany has a very large economy, as most people know, but 37% participation on social media. Now, Japan, 43%, but if you look at these numbers, Japan has a lot fewer people who are... On, of the social media sort of age. Well, or even on the internet. So Japan has a fairly large uh, section of society who just, just simply doesn't use the internet. Doesn't use the internet at all. But wow. Germany has a lot of people using the internet, the majority, of course, and they're just not using social media. So, Listen, not too surprising. Just yeah. my friend, she's always said, that, you know, if I was just talking to people in Germany, I wouldn't use it. But I have friends in England and the U.S., and... Got to have it if you want to keep in touch with them. It sounds like a uh, kind of a dream come true, you know. <laughs> Maybe you should move to Germany. But here's the uh, sort of the, the whole statistical thing. Like, oh, that's a weird statistic. It's not really. Because both Germany and Japan have kind of old populations. Yeah. They have a lot of old people. And, of course, you know, the big uh, the refugee debate in Germany. A lot of people are pro immigration from the Middle Eastern countries because they need young people. Their replacement rate is not gotta, growing. Yeah. you got to have young people. And so uh, it's interesting. I wonder if that section of the, I guess they're not considered German citizens. They might no. be eventually. Will that drag the number up, do you think? Because I, oh, yeah. I think it's pretty common in those parts of the world to be on social media a lot. Yeah, I think that's pretty common. I have a friend, again, also in that region of the world, and she seems to be pretty active on Facebook and no issues there. So, but, hey, if you really, really, really hate social media and you want to be in an industrialized first world country, Germany or Japan. Or Japan, yeah. Germ probably, I would go Germany, I think. Well, Japan, Germany. Yeah, but you get the, the, the I got the German, German heritage. heritage. Yeah. yeah, of course you would. I don't I think Japan would be a, an interesting place. Now, right now... Possibly in the middle of World War Three, so <laughs> probably going to stay away from there. Also, so. you know, all the radiation and yeah. Godzilla attacks. I'm not <laughs> not sure about I don't that. Know, I'd, be, I'd be kind of excited for a Godzilla attack. <laughs> well, General Electric, they uh, so one of the stories that is I don't know if it's in the news much, but it's it's a real thing is the aging infrastructure in the United States. Our bridges, our power, our roads, our roads. They're not in good shape. A lot of them were built a long time ago, and they haven't really been maintained. Well, it turns out that's true of the power grid that has been built by GE. In fact, there were several power stations that were built before the 90s when they weren't concerned about Internet-related hacks. And uh, turns out that those were vulnerable to being turned off remotely. Luckily, that didn't actually happen. Uh, you know, they, they made it sound like maybe it would, but it, it didn't. They fixed it before anything could happen. But... Uh, another terrifying moment in your head to think all of this could be shut off at any moment by anyone. Now, of course, it raises the question of what else is out there? That uh, What about the water treatment plants? What about, you know, those other things that were built a long time ago? How vulnerable are they? Uh, this is something that has been vulnerable for a while and has just been fixed. So, you know. Oh, water treatment. Oh, there's so many things. Yeah. I'm not down for cholera. I'm not yeah. down. Cholera is bad. Bad news, Anti-cholera league right here. So, <laughs> you, you know, first. just as you lay down to sleep tonight, keep in mind all the infrastructure can be destroyed be gone. at any moment. Oh, this is a good story. We have a new word that you can teach your little ones. It can show up on your dictionary app every day. The word sheeple is a real word now. Now, of course, if you're woke, you've known about the sheeple for a long time. Woke, woke as fuck. Yeah, uh, <laughs> we don't drop the f bombs on them. <laughs> Sheeple, of course, means people who are apt to believe whatever you tell them. Like Easily sheep. led bandwagon people. Now, the most beautiful thing about this story is not the word sheeple. Of course, the word sheeple is a, it's a little. It, at this Depending point, on context, can be a little cringy. When it when it gets to be, this is like Facebook. My parents use Facebook, which is how I know that Facebook is never going to be cool again. And once it gets in the dictionary, it's not a cool slang word anymore, right? 
I would say, yeah, that's accurate. But the great thing about it is the one of the examples they use, you know, the dictionary always gives you example sentences. Well, yeah, because how, how else are you going to know? Exactly. And the Merriam-Webster dictionary craps on Apple users as being sheeple. Oh, it's delicious. Delicious. And they're right. Apple users are sheeple. And now we have proof. It's in the dictionary. As if we If you look it. up Apple user, sheeple is what comes up. Well, you might be thinking that this episode of the news was kind of shitty. And maybe you're right. And this next story, also shitty. Oh, segues for days. Speed of poop, big or small, mammals drop a deuce in 12 seconds, study finds. A, someone financed that study. And B, the finding, 12 seconds. That seems awfully quick. Like, <laughs> like you're really well, pushing it out. <laughs> I mean, this just shows you that, you know, most mammals don't have smartphones. Oh, yeah. He's got no shampoo bottle to read even. He just has to, you know. So you might be thinking, why would anybody care about this? Yeah. How do you determine this? And you'd be right to question all those things. And how does this relate to technology? Well, it turns out that these people doing the, uh, the study. Scientists. They, they, <laughs> scientists. Scientists. They went to a zoo and a dog park to collect this valuable data. But it's much harder to collect data on more uh, mammals that live abroad. You know, how do you figure out apes? And, you know, things like that. Well, whales. What and what if whales? the animal's constipated when you go to the zoo? So they went to YouTube. And, of course, YouTube, being a, a beautiful collection of all the world's videos, there's a huge number of poop videos that you can enjoy on YouTube. Oh, <laughs> Safe search on if you're looking for animals <laughs> crapping, I guess. But uh, they, did, they did the research, and 12 seconds was the average. 12 seconds. Man, I'm way behind the curve. I am too. 23. Well, there were 23 different animals, right? I thought you were going to say 23 seconds. 23 as, if, seconds. <laughs> as if you'd measured it. <laughs> I haven't measured. You like got the stopwatch. It's like, boom, 23. And, and then to, I slammed the stopwatch in the you're toilet. Tr you're trying to cut seconds. It's like, <laughs> all right, this week it's going to be 20. Seems like a good way to uh, destroy your colon. But yeah, 23 different animals they looked at. Mammals, not just animals, mammals. Yep. To determine the uh, average poop time. Yeah, I guess if they had done, like, birds, that would have just oh, yeah. skyrocketed. Birds like, just going to just blast it on out. Yeah. Now, I imagine that uh, this is true largely in the animal kingdom, especially wild animals, because that's a vulnerable time. Yeah, Poop yeah. time. I mean, you want to get, you you get, get it, it out done and, go. and get on the move. Because, you know, I bet there's a lot of uh, prey animals that get killed while they're taking the poop. Oh, yeah, I bet so. Although, honestly, I mean, if I was a predator, I would probably kind of, like... Yeah, because you don't want it to rip into that well. <laughs> but no, but then it's out, and it's not in the inside anymore. In the anymore. guts, I so guess. So I think that would be ideal. You think animals, like, try to eat around entrails? I don't think they do. I think they just pick it clean. It depends on the animal, probably. Yeah. There's another study. No, another study. Someone financed that. <laughs> I, I will conduct that study for however many millions of dollars were spent. Also, I love the picture on this article. Yeah, the dog picture it's, is it's great. It's so precious. He looks so happy. Look at him. 12 seconds of bliss right there. <laughs> oh, 12 seconds. Well, no shampoo bottle. That brings us to the end of this week's news. And uh, I'm sure you all let us know what, if anything, you didn't like about it. I don't know what you might not like about it. I mean, just a regular episode of the news, right? We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye.